Hello, women made in the image of God. Okay, so today we're going to go over um, Numbers 1 through 3 in Mark chapter 3. So I'm just going to pray and we're going to get right into the text. No catechism for today. So, dear Heavenly Father, thank you that you are holy, holy, holy. Um, God, thank you for everything. Lord, I pray, I just thank you for your word, oh God, um, and I ask and I, I just beg you that today that you would be with us as we read. Um, I ask that your Holy Spirit would teach us through the text. I ask that you would glorify your son. Um, would Jesus be high and lifted up so that we can be um, drawn closer to you um, through what you've done? and the person and work of the Messiah. Um, thank you, God, for today. And thank you that we're not here by accident studying your word, um, but that you have given us this time to be with you, Lord. So please um, be glorified and, and please uh, open our minds to understand your scriptures so that we would grow in love for you, Lord, as we see your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get right into the text. Um, so if you have not watched, uh, if you watched, maybe is the wrong word, if you have not um, read through uh, the previous chapters, please go back and click on the links below in, uh, in the description for... Um, in the previous video because in the previous video I just posted the notes on the video and then um, put the audio Bible to listen to it um, below there so make sure you fit finish up Leviticus before you come here okay um, and check out those notes from Leviticus as well um, but yeah so numbers we are in a new book um, so let's read the introduction and let's get right into the text. So, Numbers. The introduction, introduction. The English title Numbers comes from the two censuses that are central features of this book. However, the Hebrew title in the wilderness is more descriptive of the book. Numbers tells how God's people traveled from Mount Sinai to the border of the promised land, but they were, but when they refused, to take possession of the land, God made them wander in the wilderness for nearly 40 years. Throughout the book, God is seen as a holy God who cannot ignore re rebellion or unbelief, but also as one who faithfully keeps his covenant and patiently provides for the needs of his people. Numbers ends with a new generation preparing for the conquest of Canaan. Traditionally, Jews and Christians recognize Moses as the author writing, as the author writing near during the final years of his life. Um, and I'm also going to read um, the introduction from the Reformation Study Bible. It says, in the Hebrew Bible, it was... Oh, actually, I think this is just describing what the word numbers is about, but I'll, I'll, I'll read the first sentence. It was customary to designate each of the five books of Moses by the word with which it began. Uh, you know what? Why don't we just read it? For numbers, this practice was modified by using the fifth Hebrew word as a, as a title. This word, translated in the wilderness, is an apt description of the book's content, since it describes the nation's experience during 40 years in the wilderness. When the Bible was translated into Greek, its books were given Greek names. In the case of numbers, the Greek translation abandoned the excellent Hebrew name and used a Greek word meaning numbers, arithmoi, which, uh, that actually describes only a few of its chapters. This is somewhat inappropriate. Gr Greek title was carried over by translation into the English Bible translation. Um, ba -da 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 -da. Theology of Numbers. In general terms, the book of Numbers portrays God consistently with how the preceding books have presented him. Numbers underlines the sovereign power of God in history. Despite imposing obstacles, great dangers, and the failures of his people, God brings them safely through the wilderness. His sovereign power is sufficient for event every eventuality. 
and um, we're going to read Christ in Numbers, and then we'll get into the text. Christ in Numbers. Whereas Genesis anticipates the coming of a future king through whom the nations will be blessed, and Exodus presents the, the Passover as a paradigm for divine salvation, anticipating Christ's death as the supreme Passover, Numbers provides no comparable link with Christ. Ha nevertheless, the New Testament connects Jesus with the book of Numbers in other ways. In particular, whereas the Israelites fail when tested in the wilderness, Jesus demonstrates his complete faith in God when tempted and tested by the devil. Matthew 4 and Luke 4 The work of Christ is foreshadowed by the typology of the red heifer. Um, uh, Numbers 19, 2 through 10, Hebrews 9, 13. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read the Hebrews first. Actually, you know what? Let's read both. Well, we'll get to the 19 one. Um, feel free to pause and read that, though. And then Hebrews 9.13 says, For if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify the purification of the flesh. Uh, yeah, I want more con more verse not context but well context yeah more of the verse uh um it says then it says for if the blood of goats and bulls and the sprinkling of defiled persons with the ashes of a heifer sanctify for the purification of the flesh how much more more will the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without blemish to god purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living god therefore he jesus is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance eternal inheritance since a death has occurred that redeems from the trans them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant uh hebrews is so good i just want to read the whole book right now <laughs> but for the sake of time to finish reading this paragraph so it says the work of christ is foreshadowed by the typology of the red heifer the rock that provided water and the raised serpent that brought life out of death that that's such a, I love that part in John where it calls back to this moment. Yeah, see, Jesus is preached throughout every the whole thing. You know, God is amazing. God, your word is so good. God, thank you for this time. Uh, um, but yeah, yeah. See, they show us how the new testament th under the inspiration of the holy spirit god is interpreting what is happening so in 20 uh, verse 11 it says and moses lifted up his hand and struck the rock with his staff twice and the water came out abundantly and the congregation drank in their livestock who's <laughs> not supposed to strike it twice by the way um so that we'll get there though um first corinthians 10 4 and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. And then the bronze serpent, you see that in the in um, Numbers twenty one four through nine, and then John three fourteen to fifteen. So it says, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Amen. Uh, so it says the specific prof prophecy of the conquest of David, the coming one who would defeat Israel's enemies, foreshadows the time when Christ, who is the consummate fulfillment of the Davidic covenant, will universally be recognized as the greatest king of all. Amen. All right. So if you want any more of those, I'm going to go ahead and pause so you guys can pause and, and check that out. So if you want. The, these sections please pause and read those all of it's going to be helpful information so pause and read if you would like
pause and read if you would like. 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 Pause and read if you'd like. And then there's like a little map of what's going on, what's going to be happening. And yeah, so let's get right into Numbers chapter 1. You're sending out rewards and payouts, but it's a struggle to do it right. To prevent Sorry about this ad. Questions from Numbers, Numbers 1. The Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai in the tent of meeting on the first day of the second month in the second year after they had come out of the land of Egypt, saying, Take a census of all the congregation of the people of Israel by clans, by fathers' houses, according to the number of names every male, head by head, from twenty years old and upward, all in Israel who are able to go to war, you and Aaron shall list them company by company. And there shall be with you a man from each tribe, each man being the head of the house of his fathers. And these are the names of the men who shall assist you. From Reuben, Elizer the son of Shadir. From Simeon, Shalumiel the son of Zurashaddai. From Judah, Nashan the son of Aminadab. From Issachar, Nathanael the son of Zuar. From Zebulun, Eliab, the son of Helon. From the sons of Joseph, from Ephraim, Elishama, the son of Amihud. And from Manasseh, Gamaliel, the son of Pedazar. From Benjamin, Abidon, the son of Gideoni. From Dan, Ahiezer, the son of Amishadai. From Asher, Pegiel, the son of Okran. From Gad, Eliasaph, the son of Duel. From Naphtali, Ahira, the son of Enon. These were the ones chosen from the congregation, the chiefs of their ancestral tribes, the heads of the clans of Israel. Moses and Aaron took these men who had been named, and on the first day of the second month, they assembled the whole congregation together, who registered themselves by clans, by fathers' houses, according to the number of names from twenty years old and upward, head by head, as the Lord commanded Moses. So he listed them in the wilderness of Sinai. The people of Reuben, Israel's firstborn, their generations by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, head by head, every male from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go to war, those listed of the tribe of Reuben, were forty-six thousand five hundred. Of the people of Simeon? Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, those of them who were listed, according to the number of names, head by head, every male from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Simeon were 59,300. Of the people of Gad, their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of the names from twenty years old and upward, all who were able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Gad were 45,650. Of the people of Judah, their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Judah were 74,600. Of the people of Issachar, their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Issachar were 54,400. Of the people of Zebulun. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Zebulun were 57,400. Of the people of Joseph, namely of the people of Ephraim. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, According to the number of names, from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Ephraim were forty thousand five hundred. Of the people of Manasseh, their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, 
According to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Manasseh were 32,200. Of the people of Benjamin. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Benjamin were 35,400. Of the people of Dan. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Dan were 62,700. Of the people of Asher. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Asher were 41,500. Of the people of Naphtali. Their generations, by their clans, by their fathers' houses, according to the number of names from 20 years old and upward, every man able to go to war. Those listed of the tribe of Naphtali were 53,400. These are those who were listed, whom Moses and Aaron listed with the help of the chiefs of Israel, twelve men, each representing his father's house. So all those listed of the people of Israel by their father's houses, from twenty years old and upward, every man able to go to war in Israel, all those listed were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed along with them by their ancestral tribe, for the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Only the tribe of Levi you shall not list, and you shall not take a census of them among the people of Israel. But appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of the testimony, and over all its furnishings, and over all that belongs to it. They are to carry the tabernacle and all its furnishings, and they shall take care of it, and shall camp around the tabernacle. When the tabernacle is to set out, the Levites shall take it down, and when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And if any outsider comes near, he shall be put to death. The people of Israel shall pitch their tents by their companies, each man in his own camp, and each man by his own standard. But the Levites shall camp around the tabernacle of the testimony, so that there may be no wrath on the congregation of the people of Israel. And the Levites shall keep guard over the tabernacle of the testimony. Thus did the people of Israel. They did according to all that the Lord commanded Moses. Hi, Powerade. My name is Carly. Um, I want to add that, like, I did go through it faster paced on the the when it was reading. Sorry about that. If that threw you off, you're more than welcome to um go to the video and go slower through it. Um but something that I realized I think it was last year was just like you know, sometimes when we go through these lists we like act as if it's meaningless but it's not. They all everything in scripture is important, you know, it's like God's word is to be treated with reverence every word of it you know there is not there's not a part of it that's unimportant or uninspired by by the Lord God um and so also so anyways something that stuck out to me last year was like when when I was reading through I don't know if it was this part but it was other parts of listings and uh and you know it's easy to be like uh so many words and but it's like this is literally god's word so like thank god that he corrects us and is like no that is a bad attitude to have um and um particularly it was something like along the lines i think i just was reminded that like i you know the lord knows like each one of these like this person's life you know like each one of these people like God knows them. God created them in his image. And it's just amazing. I think it was when, when I was going through Matthew or Mark or what, whichever. I should know off the top of my head what the genealogies. But I, it's Matthew, I believe, is, is where the genealogy, long genealogy is. But it's like, if you actually look into, it's so, there's there's so much beauty in just realizing, like, the Lord like had a purpose for each of these these people and used them for his glory and um showed you know and specifically thinking about in Matthew you know like Rahab and stuff like she didn't deserve the mercy of God and yet God had mercy on her and and uh yeah he you know it's it, that just amazing with with her specifically and just thinking about who God is and like how um, he takes wretches like us and 
has mercy on us uses us for glory you know ultimately she like the messiah came through built that line you know that's amazing (sighs) okay so um yeah here are the notes um with the contemplation of the tabernacle so 1 1 through 10 10 so this is setting us up for the next 10 chapters the notes says with the contemplation of the tabernacle exodus 35 uh, verse 4 to exodus 40 verse 38 and the giving of instructions for holy living leviticus 1 through 27 so leviticus uh, the lord continues to prepare his people to occupy the promised land uh, a census of fighting men is taken in this chapter chapter one then measures to ensure the order and the purity of the camp are related the organization of the camp the commissioning of the levites and their ministry the and various provisions for ceremonial purity and religious observa- observance finally provisions are made for direction and guidance of the community 9 15 through 10 10 um please uh pause and read the rest of the notes so pause and read pause and read that's it for that chapter um okay chapter two two the lord spoke to moses and aaron saying the people of israel shall camp each by his own standard with the banners of their father's houses they shall camp facing the tent of meeting on every side those to camp on the east side toward the sunrise shall be of the standard of the camp of judah by their companies the chief of the people of judah being nashan the son of Aminadab. his company is listed being seventy four thousand six hundred those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of issachar the chief of the people of issachar being nathanael the son of zur his company is listed being fifty four thousand four hundred then the tribe of zebulun the chief of the people of zebulun being eliab the son of helon his company is listed being fifty seven thousand four hundred all those listed of the camp of judah by their companies were one hundred eighty six thousand four hundred they shall set out first on the march on the south side shall be the standard of the camp of reuben by their companies the chief of the people of reuben being elizer the son of shedir his company is listed being 46,500, and those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Simeon. The chief of the people of Simeon being Shalumiel, the son of Zerushaddai. His company is listed being 59,300, then the tribe of Gad. The chief of the people of Gad being Eliasaph, the son of Ruel. His company is listed being 45,650. All those listed of the camp of Reuben by their companies were 151,450. They shall set out second. Then the tent of meeting shall set out, with the camp of the Levites in the midst of the camps. As they camp, so shall they set out, each in position, standard by standard. On the west side shall be the standard of the camp of Ephraim by their companies. The chief of the people of Ephraim being Elishima, the son of Amihud. His company is listed being 40,500. And next to him shall be the tribe of Manasseh, the chief of the people of Manasseh being Gamaliel, the son of Pedazer. His company is listed being 32,200. Then the tribe of Benjamin. The chief of the people of Benjamin being Abidin, the son of Gideoni. His company is listed being 35,400. All those listed of the camp of Ephraim by their companies were 108,100. They shall set out third on the march. On the north side, it shall be the standard of the camp of Dan by their companies. The chief of the people of Dan being Ahiezer, the son of Amashaddai. His company is listed being 62,700. And those to camp next to him shall be the tribe of Asher. The chief of the people of Asher being Pegiel, the son of Acheron. His company is listed being 41,500. Then the tribe of Naphtali. The chief of the people of Naphtali being Ahira, the son of Enan. His company is listed being 53,400. All those listed of the camp of Dan were 157,600. They shall set out last, standard by standard. These are the people of Israel as listed by their fathers' houses. All those listed in the camps by their companies were 603,550. But the Levites were not listed among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded Moses. Thus did the people of Israel. According to all that the Lord commanded Moses, so they camped by their standards, and so they set out, each one in his clan, according to his father's house. Hey, parents, kids like us, 
Okay, and then the notes are right here. So go ahead and pause and read the notes. Um, I also just think this is really cool. Um, they're, they, on the march, the tribes are to follow one another in the same order in which they are mentioned. Compare this arrangement with the four square city of Revelation 21, 6, the final, uh, the final dwelling place of God with man. Revelation 21, 6 says, The city lies four square, its length uh, the same as its width. And he measured the city with his rod, 12,000 stadia. Its length and width and height are equal. Oh, like 12, I think they're hitting on. Yeah, that's so cool. Interesting. Okay, let's, um, yeah, feel free to read that. And let's move on to chapter three today. These are the generations of Aaron and Moses at the time when the Lord spoke with Moses on Mount Sinai. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, Nadab the firstborn, and Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. These are the names of the sons of Aaron, the anointed priests, whom he ordained to serve as priests. But Nadab and Abihu died before the Lord when they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord in the wilderness of Sinai, and they had no children. So Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests in the lifetime of Aaron their father. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Bring the tribe of Levi near, and set them before Aaron the priest, that they may minister to him. They shall keep guard over him and over the whole congregation before the tent of meeting, as they minister at the tabernacle. They shall guard all the furnishings of the tent of meeting, and keep guard over the people of Israel as they minister at the tabernacle. And you shall give the Levites to Aaron and his sons. They are wholly given to him from among the people of Israel. And you shall appoint Aaron and his sons, and they shall guard their priesthood. But if any outsider comes near, he shall be put to death. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Behold, I have taken the Levites from among the people of Israel instead of every firstborn who opens the womb among the people of Israel. The Levites shall be mine, for all the firstborn are mine. On the day that I struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, I consecrated for my own all the firstborn in Israel, both of man and of beast. They shall be mine. I am the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses in the wilderness of Sinai, saying, List the sons of Levi by fathers' houses and by clans. Every male from a month old and upward you shall list. So Moses listed them according to the word of the Lord, as he was commanded. And these were the sons of Levi by their names. Gershon and Kohath and Merari. And these are the names of the sons of Gershon by their clans. Libni and Shimei. And the sons of Kohath by their clans. Emram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. And the sons of Merari by their clans. Malai and Mushai. These are the clans of the Levites by their fathers' houses. To Gershon belonged the clan of the Libnites and the clan of the Shimeites. These were the clans of the Gershonites. Their listing according to the number of all the males from a month old and upward was 7,500. The clans of the Gershonites were to camp behind the tabernacle on the west, with Eliasaph the son of Lael as chief of the father's house of the Gershonites. And the guard duty of the sons of Gershon in the tent of meeting involved the tabernacle, the tent with its covering, the screen for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the hangings of the court, the screen for the door of the court that is around the tabernacle and the altar, and its cords, all the service connected with these. To Kohath belonged the clan of the Amramites, and the clan of the Izharites, and the clan of the Hebronites, and the clan of the Uzielites. These are the clans of the Kohathites. According to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, there were 8,600, keeping guard over the sanctuary. The clans of the sons of Kohath were to camp on the south side of the tabernacle, with Elizaphan the son of Aziel as chief of the father's house of the clans of the Kohathites. And their guard duty involved the ark, the table, the lampstand, the altars, the vessels of the sanctuary with which the priests minister, and the screen, all the service connected with these. And Eleazar the son of Aaron the priest was to be chief over the chiefs of the Levites, and to have oversight of those who kept guard over the sanctuary. To Merari belonged the clan of the Malites and the clan of the Mushites. These are the clans of Merari. Their listing, according to the number of all the males, from a month old and upward, was 6,200. And the chief of the father's house of the clans of Merari was Zurio, the son of Abihail. They were to camp on the north side of the tabernacle. And the appointed guard duty of the sons of Merari involved the frames of the tabernacle, the bars, the pillars, the bases, and all their accessories, all the service connected with these also the pillars around the court, with their bases and pegs and cords. Those who were to camp before the tabernacle on the east, before the tent of meeting toward the sunrise, were Moses and Aaron and his sons, guarding the sanctuary itself to protect the people of Israel. And any outsider who came near was to be put to death. 
all those listed among the Levites, whom Moses and Aaron listed at the commandment of the Lord, by clans, all the males from a month old and upward, were 22,000. And the Lord said to Moses, List all the firstborn males of the people of Israel, from a month old and upward, taking the number of their names. And you shall take the Levites for me, I am the Lord, instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the cattle of the people of Israel. So Moses listed all the firstborn among the people of Israel as the Lord commanded him, and all the firstborn males, according to the number of names, from a month old and upward as listed, were 22,273. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the Levites instead of all the firstborn among the people of Israel, and the cattle of the Levites instead of their cattle. The Levites shall be mine, I am the Lord. And as the redemption price for the 273 of the firstborn of the people of Israel, over and above the number of the male Levites, you shall take five shekels per head. You shall take them according to the shekel of the sanctuary, the shekel of twenty giras, and give the money to Aaron and his sons as the redemption price for those who are over. So Moses took the redemption money from those who were over and above those redeemed by the Levites. From the firstborn of the people of Israel he took the money, 1,365 shekels by the shekel of the sanctuary. And Moses gave the redemption money to Aaron and his sons according to the word of the Lord, as the Lord commanded Moses. Okay, so if you want the notes for that section, please pause and read the notes. Um, yeah. I'm going to read this one. It says, The Levites are taken by God in place of the firstborn Israelite males. The firstborn males belong to God in a special way because they were delivered from death at the Passover. Okay, so go ahead and pause and read, and yeah, so now we are on Mark chapter 2. You guys just new book after new book, woo! Um, if you're a business owner... So Mark chapter 2. Mark 2 And when he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and many were gathered together so that there was no more room, not even at the door, and he was preaching the word to them. And they came, bringing to him a paralytic carried by four men, and when they could not get near him because of the crowd, they removed the roof above him, and when they had made an opening, they let down the bed on which the paralytic lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some of the scribes were sitting there, questioning in their hearts. Why does this man speak like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they thus questioned within themselves, said to them, Why do you question these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven, or to say, Rise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralytic, I say to you, Rise, pick up your bed, and go home. And he rose and immediately picked up his bed and went out before them all, so that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. He went out again beside the sea, and all the crowd was coming to him, and he was teaching them. And as he passed by, he saw Levi, the son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, Follow me. And he rose and followed him. And as he reclined at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees, when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting, and people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, 
Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in that day. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is destroyed. And so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh wineskins. One Sabbath he was going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and was hungry, he and those who were with him? How he entered the house of God in the time of Abiathar the high priest, and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and also gave it to those who were with him? And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. This is so important. I've actually been thinking about this text a lot lately um, as I'm trying to figure out my views theologically on um, the Sabbath because a lot of people are like, yeah, it doesn't matter anymore at all, like at all. And it's like, well, I don't agree with that, but I also don't believe in um trying to earn my salvation by doing good works, but I also don't believe in throwing out what God has said um, when it's not a specific ceremonial law that's been fulfilled. This is, I feel like this is, not even I feel like, this is, this is different, but the distinction here is really, really important with this passage. It says the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath, and this principle as well. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Um, so there, people have different views on the Sabbath, and um, you know we you know i'm not i'm not going to push my particular view but i would just you know say we're not trying to keep the law of god in order to be saved but out of uh gratitude for the work of christ um we rest in his finished work as well even as we think about this you know we we are to rest in the finished work of christ um and uh you know realizing the sabbath is a blessing and that the the, the in Acts and in many other books or in Acts and in another particular area you see that the believers they met on Sunday they they met on the the day of Christ's resurrection which shows this rest in in the Lord Jesus and his redemptive work um, but I'm going to shut up and just read the notes because I think that'll be more helpful and I don't want to it's late and anyways i don't want to be like talking out of the side of my face okay so one sabbath the problem with the legalistic reasoning by cer certain pharisees is illustrated in this incident the disciples were not stealing or doing farm work but were be benefiting from a provision of the law of moses whereby those in need were permitted to glean small amounts of grain from fields to satisfy their hunger leviticus 23 22 and Deuteronomy 23:25 Their accusers even counted plucking the heads of grain as reaping which was prohibited on the Sabbath but it, it's they they counted it that but they were not being unlawful um the um the disciples they were in need 
Have you never read? Jesus' questioning suggests an ironic criticism of the, their knowledge of scripture. Jesus does not justify himself by laying scripture aside. He rather shows his understanding of its depth and its proper application to human need. Amen. Go ahead and pause and read this one as well. And then, yeah, I'm going to read this part. Jesus, as the son of David and final anointed one, allows his disciples to fulfill their physical needs so that they might continue their mission of redemption, a work of necessity that is always lawful. But yeah, that's very important. Um, feel free to pause and read that. Lord, even of the Sabbath. Jesus declares his authority as the Son of Man who brings blessings, this time as the mediator of the Old Testament law concerning the Sabbath. This claim is made against the traditions that have turned the life-promoting fourth commandment into a burden. Since the Sabbath was instituted at creation not and not only under Moses, the Lord of the Sabbath is also Lord of creation. Yeah. Wow. All right. Well, that's all the text for today. So um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for letting us read together today. Um, God, would you please help us to remember the things that we've read today? Um, Holy Spirit, would you help us to respond um, with obedience to the, to the text that we've read today? Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done on our behalf. Um, just please help us to continue to meditate on your word. In Jesus' name, amen.